Today's video begins with an operation jokingly nicknamed Genchik by the operators. The name was chosen for a reason. The target was not a bunker or an armored vehicle, but something much simpler and, in today's war, often far more valuable. A generator hidden inside a rundown building close to the line of contact. Why is it so important? On the front line, it is nearly impossible to run a proper power line to a fighting position. That is why soldiers rely on gasoline or diesel generators, which effectively become the beating heart of a strong point. They provide electricity for radios, thermal imagers, drones, surveillance systems, and even basic lighting. Without power, communication breaks down, defenses weaken, and a position quickly becomes vulnerable. Destroying a generator, in practice, often means neutralizing an entire shelter. The first drone opened the way by striking the roof of the building, creating an entry point. Moments later, another drone dropped its combat payload and a grenade straight inside, ensuring the job was finished. Have you ever seen short videos or games where the main point was to find some hidden or disguised object? Probably yes, but did you always find them? Try to find the soldier here now. There he is, and the drone operator has spotted him. The success of the plan, and perhaps even the life of a friend, could depend on this maneuver. That's why they are like predators, tracking their prey even when others can't see them, even behind trees, and especially at night. But a predator is a creature that is difficult to deceive, so even though he ran away from the first explosion, it did not help him reach a safe point, but only delayed the inevitable, and when the drone finally spotted the 300 soldier who was seriously wounded, it finished what it had started a few moments earlier. A Russian guide decided to go for a run across a field that clearly showed signs of fighting, with holes from cannons, grenades, mines, and so on, possibly mined with anti-tank mines. And the Russian sprinter was laying them. But when he saw the drones, he decided to run as fast as he could. And a miracle saved him from the first drone, however, even lightning does not strike twice in the same place, let alone a miracle, so the second drone successfully reached its target. T was decided to check the direction in which our marathon runner had run. Two shelters were spotted. The first was an underground shelter containing flammable substances, possibly gunpowder or gasoline. So after a precise strike, the burrow burned to the ground. The second one was more interesting. It was a house with provisions and part of the ammunition, something similar to the house with the generator. And here, thanks to the friendly work of two operators, they managed to literally blow up the building, one making an entrance hole, the other detonating from the inside. The charge was not that large for such an explosion, so it is most likely that ammunition, rockets, or drones were stored there. If we compare World War I with the present day, one striking difference immediately catches the eye, and it's not drones, artillery, or multiple launch rocket systems. The key change is mobility. Back then, vehicles were a luxury for ordinary soldiers. Even just getting on a motorcycle was considered a small victory, a reason to celebrate. Access to any motorized transport could radically change a soldier's effectiveness on the battlefield. Today, the situation is completely different. Almost anyone can bring a vehicle to their unit to perform combat tasks. In some cases, as we have seen with Russian troops, soldiers simply seize found vehicles and use them. The widespread availability of motorcycles, ATVs, and cars has significantly increased the mobility of ground forces. Every vehicle becomes a potential target. If it is not destroyed now, it can be used later in a way that the Ukrainian military cannot prevent. That is why Ukrainian forces target motorcycles and ATVs as soon as they spot them. And the results are often deadly. As we have seen repeatedly in previous operations and now, 
A single strike can destroy several passengers. The combination of mobility and modern surveillance has made these small, fast vehicles priority targets on the battlefield. In one recent operation, a Russian soldier was seen desperately trying to escape from a drone overhead. He ran toward what he hoped would be a safe hiding place, a nearby building. But this was no ordinary shelter. It had already been partially destroyed by the army of his own country. The walls were riddled with holes and cracks, a maze of weak points that offered the perfect opportunity for a drone strike. Every opening, every gap, allowed the attacking forces to target him with precision, turning what seemed like cover into a deadly trap. As the soldier tried to take shelter inside, the drone operator did not hesitate. A carefully calculated strike was launched, exploiting all the weaknesses of the crumbling structure. The result was devastating. The building could not withstand the attack. The roof collapsed under the force of the explosion, and debris rained down over the soldier. The very walls he had hoped would shield him instead became the instrument of his defeat, leaving him buried under the fragments of the same structure he had believed would keep him safe. During a night reconnaissance mission, the Cardia Unmanned Forces Battalion detected several groups of enemy personnel moving across the area. Some were traveling in pairs, while others were alone, scattered across the open terrain. Thanks to drones equipped with advanced thermal imaging and night vision cameras, each of them was clearly visible, even in the darkness of the night. By the end of the operation, the night had claimed its toll. Eight soldiers of the Russian army were eliminated, each falling in the very fields where they had tried to move unseen. However, that was the end of the night for those soldiers, but other units continued to operate in different areas, achieving similar results. Their actions led to the elimination of combat personnel, as well as the destruction of enemy equipment. At the start of this fragment, a sniper was eliminated. Shelters, motorcycles, other military vehicles, and mortars were all targeted. Starlink terminals and Grad multiple launch rocket systems, along with the personnel operating them, were also destroyed. The final strike was especially dramatic. After the Grad systems were hit, a massive explosion erupted, caused by the detonation of unused supplies stored nearby. Every action highlighted the efficiency and precision of these coordinated operations, leaving a clear impact on the battlefield. The last one for today will be a shot from a combat drone dropping a warhead on a Russian soldier who can no longer be saved by dry trees. Thank you for watching.